Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Macmillan Education Iberia In Focus event for Kids Can. My name is Louise Connolly. I'm the events manager at Macmillan Education Iberia, and I'm delighted that you could join us here this evening. Uh, thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedules. And also, I want to take this opportunity to congratulate you all on the tremendous work that you've all done this year to keep schooling going. Well done to you all. With no further ado, I would like to introduce our first speaker, Mark Ormerod. Mark, fantastic to have you here. Thank you for joining us. Um, Probably I can't do justice to Mark in a short introduction, really. We've been, no, we've been working now together for many years. And well, he's been working with Macmillan for many years, more years than I have. Mark is um, an ELT teacher who specializes in primary education. Uh, he has a particular interest in using drama and mini dialogues to spark uh, pupils' confidence and their linguistic skills. He's also the author of a range of very successful primary courses, including um, Find Out, uh, Tiger, Heroes, and the latest Macmillan Education primary course, which is Ca Kids Can. So, Mark, um, Mark is going to talk today to us about um, just a little more curiosity, dot, dot, dot. Let's see what the dots will be. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, hello. Hi. Um, <clears throat> I hope you're all having a good day. And uh, as Louise has said, thank you for joining us. Uh, I would prefer to be in a conference room or a classroom with you all face to face. Uh, unfortunately, that's not possible at the moment. I hope it will be in the near future. In this short online session, I'd like to share with you some thoughts and reflections about curiosity, in particular, the curiosity of our pupils. Where does it come from? And can we get them some more? But uh, before we look at that, before we think about that, I'm going to hand you back to Louise, who is going to carry out um, a poll uh, to find out how important we think curiosity is in the EFL classroom. Okay, so as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, we have a short poll now, and the question is, how important is curiosity in your English lessons? You've got four options. A, it's essential. B, it's important. C, it's quite important. D, it's not necessary. So let's see what the answers will be. And the answers are coming in. We'll just give you a couple of, of seconds to reply to that. It's actually, while we're waiting, Mark, I was going yes. to say, um, it's, um, it's difficult, isn't it, to, to answer. Um, it's essential, it's important, it's not necessary, it's quite important. Mm -hmm. But I, I would tend, I'm not going to say what my answer is, but mm -hmm. I think I might go for the first one. Uh, the answers are coming in. Yes, there seems to be 50% um, saying it's essential. Uh, it's important. To, ooh, ooh, oh, no, it's even going up more. 100% are saying it's essential. 100% <laughs> totally agree. No, no, it's going down again. We've got 50 and 50. It's essential and it's important. Okay, okay. it's staying there. So I think we can say 
50% are saying it's essential and 50% are saying it's important. So there's a 50-50. Well, uh, do you know, I'm not surprised uh, by that answer. Um, I think as teachers, common sense has always told us that uh, curiosity is important in our children's education. But the good news is that neuroscientists have now confirmed it. It's true. When we are curious, our brains prepare themselves for learning. When we are curious, our brains are more receptive to new knowledge, new input, new experiences, and new social encounters. So this, of course, makes learning more enjoyable, more memorable, and therefore more efficient. So yes, of course, we would love the children to have lots of curiosity and to be very curious. Just to say, Before, Mark, that 60, 67% said um, essential and 33 uh, important in the end. It changed slightly. Okay, well, it's all, it's, it's all on the, uh, the side of important, so we <laughs> exactly. all seem to be on the same page. Um, before we consider how we might help to increase those levels of curiosity, um, in the classroom, we might like to think about the areas in which we want the pupils to be curious. Um, <clears throat> there's cross-curricular curiosity. Uh, we would like the pupils to, to be interested and curious about other subjects. That's going to help us enormously with our CLIL lessons. There's uh, social curiosity, wanting to get to know and understand other people and this is going to be essential to us as language teachers because there are often moments when we want to put the students together uh, to find out about each other in activities rather like this one which comes from uh, kids can three uh, the pupils listen to one of the course characters being interviewed about what they can and can't do. And then the pupils have an opportunity to interview each other about what they can and can't do. Now, of course, this type of activity, not just at this level, but at higher levels, it becomes purely mechanical if the pupils are not interested in each other, if they have no social curiosity. And if it's mechanical, it becomes less meaningful, it becomes less efficient as a language learning vehicle. So yes, we want them to have lots of social curiosity. We'd also like them to have a cultural curiosity, being interested in different cultures from around the world. And also, we'd like them to have a little experiential curiosity. This is the curiosity of wanting to have new experiences, to try out new hobbies and new activities. Of course, there are limits on how many experiences we can offer the children in the classroom, but we can at least open the world, open windows on the world to show them what experiences they can have so that they can make choices in the future. So how easy is it for us to increase the pupils' levels of curiosity in these areas? Well, apparently it's not difficult. Why? Because it is often said that all children are curious. They're born curious. They're naturally curious. And of course, this is true. But not all children have the same degree of curiosity. Not all children are curious about the same things. Uh, some children may have had negative experiences when expressing curiosity and now have become afraid of doing so. And some children, of course, are so shy, so timid, that they are afraid to ask a question in front of the class. <clears throat> So if we accept that uh, this is true, that 
curiosity is not guaranteed uh, at the right levels every lesson. It is part of our job as teachers, another part of our job, to awaken and engage curiosity, to feed, nurture and satisfy it. Although don't satisfy it completely because we want to leave the children somewhere to go. Uh, it's our job to encourage it and praise it, praise every expression of curiosity. And it's also our job to show the pupils what they can do with it. Now, if it's our job to do all of these things, it is also the job of the materials and the course books we use. So with that in mind, I would now like to show you some of the features of Kids Can that help to promote curiosity in the classroom. One area in which we can all promote uh, curiosity in the classroom is with questions. A good question can awaken and engage the curiosity of our pupils. Questions can help the pupils to express their curiosity. So of course, there is no doubt that we want to create an environment in the classroom where questions are considered normal and where questions are welcomed and encouraged. And this is why when you open Kids Can, you will see that the unit titles are questions. Um, <clears throat> on the screen, you can see uh, the unit titles, some of the unit titles from level three of Kids Can. Where do people do sport? What's amazing about animals, etc., etc. Traditionally, these unit titles have been one or two words, sport, animals, technology, food. But the presence of these questions really is a great step forward. Not only do the children find out what the topic of the unit is, but the question immediately engages the pupil in thinking about the topic. And if we ask them to suggest one or two answers, uh, we create a need for the pupils to use the vocabulary that in fact they are going to learn in the unit. Um, <clears throat> here you can see some of the questions from other levels of uh, Kids Can. You will notice that there is a good selection of WH questions. How, when, where, how and what. And notice that in levels five and six, all the questions begin with why. This is because uh, why questions normally demand a much higher level of thinking skills and also a higher level of language. So if we agree that we want to create an environment where uh, questions are considered normal and uh, questions are to be encouraged, what do we do about those pupils who are so painfully shy or afraid to ask questions in front of the class? Well, here's one idea. We can do what many teachers already do and put a question box in the classroom. The children can write their questions and slip them into the box. They can do it anonymously. And I would suggest that they can also do it in their own language if they need to. Obviously, we would like them to do it in English, but if they need to do it in their own language, it's not a problem. We can reformulate the question in English in class. So questions. Let's move on to uh, another area. Illustrations and photos. 
Now, all of us as teachers, we use images to awaken, engage and feed our pupils curiosity. And uh, it's true also of all course books. But I, I have to congratulate the editors of uh, Kids Can and also the design team for providing us with pages that have illustrations like the one you can see on the screen. There is just so much going on in this picture. This is the picture that opens the unit, where do we do sport? Not only do the pictures contextualize the uh, vocabulary of the unit, they also help prompt the children to answer uh, the, the, the title, the question in the title of the unit. The pictures are, uh, in, in the pictures you will find a lot of humour. This is also essential for our enjoyment. And there are also hidden challenges. If you look in the bottom left hand corner, there is a curiosity corner and the children are challenged to find 10 different types of ball, a football, a basketball, a tennis ball, a table tennis ball. And uh, I think all children will love doing that activity. Now, curiosity corners are a regular feature in Kids Can in all levels, not just in lesson one of the pupils book, but other lessons too. And uh, they also appear in the activity books. Many of these curiosity corners uh, use amazing photos with amazing facts, like this one from level one. Did you know that some squirrels are different colors? I didn't, and I think that's amazing. I am now curious to know if there are other types of squirrel that are not just grey and red. In fact, if you're curious to find out uh, if there are other colours of squirrel, you could do a quick uh, Google search after the session. Going into uh, level three, we can see another very interesting photo of the most extraordinary, amazing animal, which is called Atarsia. And the children are challenged to answer a question. Is it a mammal or a reptile? Now, in this case, we are challenging the children to use knowledge that they have just learned about the differences between mammals and reptiles. But if they have any doubt about the answer, they can look online and uh, find the answer very easily. The tarsia is a mammal because, uh, for one reason, it has fur. If you ask me, what's the function of these curiosity corners, these many curiosity corners? I would say, well, they offer teachers a small, fascinating, optional extension to every topic in the book. And uh, many of these curiosity corners also create what psychologists call specific curiosity. Specific curiosity is the need to find a very specific fact or to find a very specific answer, which can normally be satisfied by asking an expert or going online. But sometimes, Sometimes, and this is the exciting part, sometimes the answers we find are so fascinating, so intriguing, so surprising that we spark an interest in the subject that leads the children to a more epistemic curiosity. Epistemic curiosity is wanting to know more about a subject, wanting to understand a subject more deeply. Now this can happen to you, it can happen to me, 
but when it happens to our children or our pupils, it's, it's a wonderful thing. It's surely one of the objectives of education. And so I would say the curiosity corners offer great opportunities for the children to find new interests, new fascinations, new hobbies perhaps, and uh, maybe even a, a lifetime passion for something. Let's, uh, let's move on. Um, one way that uh, kids can helps to awaken and uh, engage children in cultural curiosity is through uh, these intercultural chat groups. On the screen, you can see one from level three, where three children from different English speaking countries, the UK, Ireland and the USA, these children talk about what's a traditional dish from your country. And in other topic areas, they also discuss cultural, culturally relevant information. <clears throat> um, these chat groups are very safe, of course. They are limited to children who are participating in a quiz. And we'll talk a little about the quiz a little later. This, uh, this chat is followed up in the activity book by uh, a radio program called Kids Can Talk, when children talk about uh, their favorite traditional dishes. And uh, we also see an example of writing about a traditional dish. One thing that I think is, uh, is important is that these, uh, these chats, these exchanges of cultural information, uh, they embrace the fact that not all, that we can live in one country, but we don't necessarily come from that country. So um, Maria, who wrote this text, her father is actually from Argentina, even though they live in the UK. And so in their house, they all love pies, or as Maria tells us in Spanish, they say empanadas. Another way that kids can engage uh, our pupils' curiosity, cultural curiosity, is with stories, stories from around the world. Hmm. Excuse me. I'd like to share with you uh, my favorite story, which is the story of Julia and Juan. Julia lives in the United States and she goes to school by bus. And uh, as you can see in the picture, she's not very happy about it. She thinks the school bus is boring. But then she watches a documentary about Juan. And Juan lives in South America and his journey to school is quite different. It's very long, it's hazardous, and it's dangerous, which leads Julia to think that actually she's very lucky to be able to go to school by bus. Um, <clears throat> while we're talking about stories, I would also like to point out uh, what I think is a lovely, lovely activity to engage our pupils' curiosity in the stories that they are about to watch on video or about to read and listen to in the book. The activity requires the children to listen to environmental noises from the story and to guess where the story happens. Well, rather than me talking about it, why don't you do one of these uh, activities? So uh, if you listen carefully, you will hear some noises. Think, where does the story happen? Activity one, listen and predict. Where does the story happen?
Okay. Okay, so on your screen, you will see the question. It's a have you say, where does the story happen? And all you have to do is write a short answer. Well, you know what, Mark? You've got me really intrigued. Are you curious? Because I, I am totally curious because I'm not convinced it's one place. Aha. Uh, yes, well. I, 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 I mean, it feels like there are two side by side. Let, let's see what people think. But that, and I was, I was listening out really carefully and, the, and then it changed. And it seemed like I was in a different place. So let's, let's see what people say. Uh, we've got an answer in a park. Somebody's also said in a, in a bus station. <laughs> Another person who says something similar to what I was thinking, apart from, I, I actually thought it sounded like a train, train station or something like that. And then the other was in a, in a, I don't know, a zoo like environment or a forest, but not your typical English forest, rather a tropical forest or something like that. Let's see, uh -huh. I'll just give people, oh, we're very, oh, we've got more answers. In the street by a park, a theme park and a tropical jungle. Ah, there you're with me. Mm. And yes, and a park. So, oh, fun fair was another one. So Mark, please put <laughs> us out of our misery. We're, we're totally curious and, and intrigued to know that, where, where is where? it? It's funny you should say that because um, in class, uh, I wouldn't put you out of your misery. I would leave you. <laughs> <laughs> I would leave you to uh, find the answer by uh, watching the story. So you can watch Very the story good. to see if you are right or wrong. But you know, no. I'm, I'm, I'm an impatient uh, girl who, who wants to know now. I can't wait. Okay. But that's fine. Okay. Well, that's fine. And also, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have time to uh, watch the I story, know. sadly. Yeah. So I will, put, I will put you out of your misery. The, uh, <laughs> the first sound you heard was uh, a bus arriving at a bus stop in the street. Um, and that was the part of the story, which is Julia. And the uh, other part of the story is a tropical jungle in South America, in Bolivia, where uh, Juan has to go to school through the jungle, avoiding the wild wow. animals and the snakes. Wow. Snake, snakes. He has to cross a bridge, yes. a broken bridge, and he has to climb a rock face to go to school. And uh, if you think that this is uh, an exaggeration, it is actually based on the lives of children who go to school in Bolivia. So uh, this is one story Tremendous. that really, really helps to, um, to, to give us points of comparison that we can compare culturally. Absolutely. Um, right. So uh, there we go. Let's, uh, let's move, well, other stories that um, help to develop curiosity are uh, in higher levels where, where stories are open-ended, so they have to be continued. So the, the pupils have to uh, really engage with the story and think how the story might continue. And some stories end uh, open to interpretation. So by quinto and sexto, we really want the children to be using interpretational skills. Um, let's move on to uh, another area. We don't have a lot of time now, but um, projects or projects with a product. Uh, how can we engage our pupils' curiosity enough to do a project? And, uh, I think there are many, many answers to this question, but I would like to offer one which is relevant to Kids Can, uh, and I think very relevant to our EFL classrooms. When, product, when projects have a product that is fun, interesting, curious, a product that is maybe useful or purposeful, and when we can show the children this product before they do the project, 
it's much easier to engage their curiosity and to get them involved. For me, a product is not a piece of writing that you put on a piece of card and put on a wall. Uh, that, that is uh, a piece of writing. But a project, uh, I think, demands a more interesting, fascinating, useful kind of product. And uh, I'd like to... Pro products could be a, a mini book, because a mini book is a thing. It's an interesting thing. You turn the pages, you can share it with your family, with your friends. A product could be a menu, a menu for a monster meal. But uh, we could use the menu in class for a canteen role play. So the children, if they see that these products are used and valued and inspire curiosity in, in, in their family and friends, uh, projects start to become much more interesting for children. And uh, one of my favorites, it's a project I've done many, many times. And if any of you have seen my workshop on using mini dialogues in the classroom, you will have seen me talk about this before. But uh, in this project, the product is a crazy sandwich. And it's so easy to make. It's basically a sheet of paper that is shaped like a slice of bread the children can stick the ingredients onto the piece of bread and uh, if you fold the piece of bread in half it's it's like having a sandwich and uh, why is it a crazy sandwich well because the children can include all kinds of crazy objects like a football or a computer and this project has always uh, delighted my pupils they love the creativity and the product is useful in the classroom because we can use it in a role play. Like these girls uh, are showing us on the page, would you like a cheese, chocolate and football sandwich? Mmm, yes please. Would you like a tuna and computer sandwich? Ooh. No, thank you. And um, I can promise you that uh, the curiosity to find out what children have in their sandwich is, is enormous. Everybody wants to look and see what's in everybody's sandwiches. And uh, I have had some extraordinary uh, crazy sandwiches in class uh, that have included famous football players. Um, and <laughs> and even castles, a castle sandwich. But um, yes, to, to really engage children's curiosity, I believe we need good products. If you have the opportunity to look at uh, a copy of Kids Can, do look at some of the projects and look at the products that the children can create. And finally, because we only have uh, a couple of minutes before I must uh, leave you, I would like to just uh, make a point about review lessons. How can we engage our pupils' curiosity enough to do a review lesson? I ask this question because uh, traditionally there are review lessons at the end of every unit in our EFL course books, in all EFL course books, and this is good practice. It's good for the children to learn that reviewing their work is a good study skill. But it worries me that, that sometimes uh, course books make review lessons look like a test, a test of memory. And uh, I don't think that that's right. They are not tests. Reviewing language should be fun. It should be enjoyable. And that's why uh, kids can we have made every effort to make the review lessons enjoyable and fun and uh, to ignite a, a, a sort of diversive curiosity in the children where they want to get involved because it looks fun and enjoyable. What you can see on the screen is uh, the introduction to 
the quiz that I mentioned earlier. And so uh, the children at the, in the review lesson will participate in a quiz. The quiz is fun, it's not threatening, and it's collaborative so the children can work together. It's on video, so it's, it's as fun as watching a TV quiz on television. And it's very inclusive, no matter what the level of the children. If you look at the points system, I hope you can see, but I'll read it just in case you're watching this on your mobile phones. Um, there are three points for every correct answer in English. There are two points for every correct answer in English with a spelling mistake, emphasizing that spelling is important. And there's one point for a correct answer in the children's own language. So no matter what the level, everybody can participate. And uh, in levels five and six, the, uh, the review lessons don't look at all like a test. They look like these wonderful uh, pages in young teenage magazines where you have lots of puzzles and questionnaires and, and fun activities. And, um, and so with that, I have someone in my ear now telling me that I should uh, finish. So I would like to um, thank you for your time and thank you for uh, listening. I believe that uh, Louise is now going to give you a couple of minutes to um, send in your questions. Exactly. Thank you so much, Mark. That's been wonderful, really wonderful. Your ideas, um, I love the curiosity corners. And I too <laughs> am intrigued and curious to find out more about the tarsier. And oh, wow. about squirrels <laughs> as well, but in particular the tarsier, the little mammal. Very curious what little it, character, no? What extraordinary yes. large eyes. And, Absolutely. Uh, Mm. And uh, I don't think those eyes can move like our eyes. I think they have to turn okay. their heads. They, they turn their heads like oh. owls. Okay. Oh, you really have sparked my curious. I am. I'm going to certainly do a search on it. And no it idea the that they existed. This could be the beginning <laughs> of a lifelong passion in squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> But what you were saying about yeah, moving from you know, uh, curiosity, general curiosity to specific and epistemic, and and it becoming perhaps of a lifelong passion is 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 a really important point eh, that you've made. And, and yeah, I think so. And hopefully, uh, it has been our intention, and I I, I think we've uh, achieved it. Is uh, we've provided lots of opportunities for that to happen with the material fantastic a, and the intercultural and, sorry no 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 i was going to say we've had a, a fantastic editorial team who have had great fun uh, inputting on this as well fantastic and the intercultural chat groups or exchange groups the ideas there really 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 excellent um, and all very doable and the review sections as being fun and engaging and appropriate for the different ages and abilities. Fantastic. No, really fantastic. Mm. Thank you so much. I hope um, that uh, if anyone's interested that uh, people will be able to uh, see an example of one of the quizzes maybe on the Macmillan website. I don't think one of them is there at the moment, but hopefully there will be soon. Okay, and if people are interested, obviously, in finding out more about this course, there is a question in the online survey question, uh, survey monkey questionnaire that we launch at the end. Um, and if you're interested, please answer that question and we can get in touch with you. And I'm just checking now the question and comment box. There are comments, Mark. Comments about saying thank you. That was wonderful. <laughs> excellent, um, excellent ideas. Very... That's very generous so, and lovely of people. <laughs> well, you. you've been very generous with us um, with your ideas. Um, it's been really interesting. Uh, Martha says, I often use laptops as kids love the layout. 
Um, yes, what she's saying is, I often use laptops as final products, regardless of what the topic is. Uh, mm. Kids love the layout and putting them to, 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 together. So it's mm -hmm. nice when people share an idea yep. with us as well, Lovely. I think. Lovely, thank you so much. Uh, and thanks for, from Sandra. Thank you, Sandra. Thank you, um, Mark, that's been great, um, a real pleasure. And uh, thank you for taking the time to be with us. I'm just going to hand over to my colleague, Isia Arieta now. She's going to give a short presentation um, on Kids Can. She's going to explain a bit more uh, more detail about Kids Can. Isia, bienvenida. ¿Qué tal? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. De aquí, desde Bilbao. Encantada oh, de estar esta tarde aquí. Ay, muy bien. Pues Isia nos explicará. So Isia is going to explain to us a little bit in more detail about Kids Can. Bueno, todo tuyo, Isia. Vale, gracias. Perfecto. Vale, pues eh, buenas tardes a todos y a todas. Eh, en, primer, en primer lugar, decir que estoy encantada de estar esta, esta tarde aquí para presentaros este fantástico método que es KidsCant. KidsCant es el nuevo método de primaria de Macmillan. Este año tendremos disponibles los niveles 1, 2 y 3. Y en el año que viene, en el 2022, sacaremos los niveles 4, 5 y 6. Eh, la metodología de KidsCant está basada en storytelling y todas las eh, unidades comienzan con una, con una pregunta que, con mi, que culmina, que acaba en un proyecto final. Eh, como han dicho nuestros ponentes, fomenta la curiosidad y la creatividad y desarrolla las competencias comunicativas, las destrezas colaborativas y el desarrollo socioemocional de los niños. Mm, como ha dicho eh, nuestro ponente Mark, el, la curiosidad es la chispa de, que motiva a los niños y, y como ha dicho también Donna, eh, la motivación también hoy en día es algo fundamental. Entonces en KidsCan estos dos aspectos van a estar presentes en todos los niveles. Eh, Mark decía que el aprendizaje empieza eh, atrayendo a, a, a los niños, atrayendo esa curiosidad podemos conseguir el aprendizaje. Eh, vamos a verlo. Eh, vamos a ver en primer lugar las características principales de KidsCan. En, pri en primer lugar tenemos la curiosidad de Curiosity, tal como ha dicho Mark. Eh, el método despierta la curiosidad de los niños y a través de esa curiosidad vamos a extraer ese aprendizaje. Vamos a um, aprovechar esa, esa, esa curiosidad para crear unas condiciones óptimas del aprendizaje. Otro punto importante es la creatividad. La, el libro fomenta la, de la creatividad de los niños. En KidsCan los niños pueden desarrollar su imaginación y lo van a hacer con distintas actividades. Eh, pueden ser actividades eh, de arts, de arte, de danza, de poesía, de pensamiento crítico. El siguiente punto importante es la comunicación. Lo que queremos es eh, proporcionarles a los niños herramientas eh, de comunicación para que se sientan eh, con confianza para comunicarse en situaciones reales del día a día, que les sean cercanas y les sean eh, que, situaciones cotidianas en las que se sientan cómodos. La colaboración también va a ser un aspecto importante de KidsCamp, el trabajo cooperativo, queremos que los niños trabajen juntos y para ello vamos a utilizar los proyectos del final de la unidad y eh, los cuentos también, las historias, van a ser un buen, una buena ocasión para que los niños eh, desarrollen las, las habilidades socioemocionales, como vamos a ver enseguida, porque todos los cuentos, todas las historias van a transmitir un valor. Eh, el último aspecto importante a destacar y un punto muy importante, en mi opinión, de KidsCamp, es el tratamiento de la diversidad. El tratamiento de la diversidad va a estar presente eh, continuamente a lo largo de, de todas las lecciones. Los profesores vais a tener recursos para, te, para atender esa diversidad del, agua, del aula. Sabemos que en inglés la diversidad es muy grande 
eh, los niveles que tenéis en las clases, es muy difícil tener una clase en un nivel homogéneo, entonces en KidsCan vais a tener actividades, por ejemplo, con diferentes instrucciones para atender esos distintos niveles, vais a tener worksheets a tres niveles, fichas de a tres niveles de dificultad y también lo que queremos es, eh, y lo va, a tener, lo va a hacer también de una manera sistemática y muy explícita, eh, queremos ayudar al profesor a crear una clase, un clima inclusivo en la clase, ¿eh? dotando y fomentando los talentos de cada niño, que todos los niños se sientan respetados y cómodos dentro del aula. Vale, estas son un poquito las características principales y ahora vamos a pasar, si os parece, a ver el recorrido de una unidad. Esta concretamente es la unidad 2 del nivel 3 y yo quería destacar eh, lo primero, algo que ha mencionado también Mark, y es de verdad las ilustraciones, el trabajo que se ha hecho en este método. Eh, yo en todos los sitios que lo he presentado, todo el mundo me ha destacado lo atractivo que es. Y no tenéis que ver más que esta doble página y que comienza, como hemos dicho, con una pregunta. La pregunta tiene la función, en primer lugar, de picar esa curiosidad que nos decía Marc, ¿verdad? De picar a los niños la curiosidad qué vamos a aprender aquí, que intentar extraer un poco esa curiosidad de ellos, pero también lo que queremos con esta pregunta es que el aprendizaje sea un aprendizaje eh, significativo, que todo cobre un sentido y eso se va a traducir al final con el proyecto final. Cuando acabemos la unidad, como he dicho, todos vamos a ser capaces de contestar esta pregunta y lo vamos a plasmar en el proyecto final. En este caso, en nivel 3, eh, comienza con un vídeo donde se presenta el tema y los niños, como se ha dicho también Marc, se presentan a un quiz, tienen que presentarse a un quiz donde ellos a lo largo de la unidad van a ir investigando y preparando todas las respuestas que van a necesitar para contestar al final en el quiz. Con lo cual, el elemento motivador también está presente continuamente. Vamos a pasar aquí. Aquí tenemos eh, la siguiente lesson, es la story. Eh, las, todas las historias son historias animadas y eh, todos los tenéis, los vídeos están subtitulados, de nuevo, como os decía, para el tratamiento de la diversidad. Puede haber alumnos que no pueden entender la visualización del vídeo sin ayuda y necesitan que sean subtitulados. Mm, los vídeos, la verdad, los ponentes han mostrado algunos de ellos, como veis, son de, la verdad, de una alta calidad y hemos apostado no solo por la calidad, sino por la cantidad. Cuando decía Dona también la importancia de la motivación, sabemos y nos consta que, que los vídeos son un recurso muy motivador para los niños, tienen mucho impacto visual, entonces vais a disponer eh, primero y segundo, el nivel primero y segundo de siete vídeos por unidad y a partir de tercero de cinco vídeos por unidad. Entonces yo creo que vais a tener cantidad y calidad, como digo. Vale. Eh, cada historia eh, transmite un valor al final del cuento, con lo cual queremos también que desarrollen las habilidades socioemocionales, que se sientan emocionalmente también implicados. La siguiente lesión es la lección cross-curricular, que en este caso, como el topic son los animales, la pregunta, recuerdo que era what's amazing about animals, pues lógicamente la lección cross-curricular gira en torno a natural science. En este caso, eh, les explicamos la diferencia entre los mammals and reptiles y también va apoyado por otro vídeo. Como os he dicho, serían cinco por unidad. En este caso, como es información de Natural Science, el vídeo no es un vídeo de ficción, es un vídeo de información real. Siguiente lesson es la lección de Culture. Eh, en las lecciones de cultura están íntimamente ligadas con el tema y en este caso son siempre elecciones de cultura británica y en este caso eh, el vídeo y la información que transmite es la de este niño, es un niño británico que tiene un erizo en su casa y entonces nos cuenta esta información de cómo vive ese erizo, cómo duerme, lo que come, entonces esa información real nos va a venir luego bien para compararla y personalizarla en, con nosotros, personalizar ese aprendizaje en nuestro caso. Y finalmente tendríamos el repaso, el review, y aquí tenemos el quiz que nos decía Dave, 
eh, Marc, perdón, la, la unidad culmina con este quiz, esta especie de concurso donde los niños han investigado a lo largo de la unidad, han aprendido un montón de cosas y todo lo que les van a preguntar al final sobre los animales y aquí tienen la ocasión de responderlo. Esto sería a grandes rasgos una unidad y después del quiz tenemos el producto final que sería el proyecto con la pregunta que tenemos que responder. En este caso la pregunta era what's amazing about animals y entonces los niños tienen que hacer un amazing animals. Hacemos la manualidad, el proyecto, aquí estaría presente de nuevo la, cre la creatividad, les damos la opción a los niños de que desarrollen su creatividad para hacer el mejor amazing animals y finalmente pues lo tendrían que presentar en clase. Vale, esto sería el recorrido de una unidad. Ahora os voy a contar un poquito los componentes de que vais a disponer. Eh, en este caso serían los componentes del profesor. En primer lugar, el material digital. El material digital de que van a disponer los profesores que vais a disponer sería el Classroom Presentation Kit, que como sabéis es el libro digital para proyectarlo en la clase. Luego tendríais un Test Generator, que es una aplicación para generar exámenes a la carta. Pasaríamos al Teacher Resource Center, que como su nombre indica, es el banco de recursos del profesor, todos los recursos extras, todos los eh, materiales adicionales, worksheet, etc. Seguidamente vamos a ver lo que tendrían los niños. Como ha dicho Donna, la motivación y, y disfrutar, eh, jugar, disfrutar del idioma, del gusto por el idioma, es uno de los objetivos de KidsCamp. Y en este caso los niños, en, eh, cuando compren el libro, van a tener una aplicación que se llama Navio, donde van a tener uno, un juego en 3D. En ese juego van a tener actividades interactivas para practicar todo el lenguaje de la unidad. Todo la, es el lenguaje de la unidad. Eh, el material, este lenguaje, se puede trabajar en casa, se puede practicar en casa o se puede practicar en clase. Si queréis hacerlo en clase, podéis hacer un seguimiento de la, de la práctica de los niños, pero si no, también lo pueden hacer en casa. La idea es que jugando ellos vayan reforzando todo lo aprendido en clase en las unidades. Eh, con Kitsan también deciros que vamos a estar preparados para cualquier escenario, dadas las circunstancias actuales, eh, un escenario presencial, un escenario semipresencial, un escenario virtual, vais a estar eh, en ese sentido cubiertos con el método. Eh, ahora os vamos a decir cómo lo vais a hacer. Eh, para cualquier incidencia digital, para cualquier problema digital que podáis tener en el centro, contamos con nuestro equipo de informáticos y técnicos que os ayudarán encantados. Y ahora vamos a ver un poco el material que dispondrán de los, del material que dispondrán los niños. Vale, los niños cuando compren su libro tendrán, como tenemos siempre, su Pupils Book, su Activity Book. El Activity Book tendremos dos Activity Book, el Activity Book normal o el Essential Activity Book. El Essential Activity Book es el mismo temario, pero, y de nuevo, para atender esa diversidad que tenéis en el aula, es una activity con un itinerario más tranquilo. Las actividades son las mismas, pero están más controladas, van más pautadas. Entonces, es un material que nosotros proporcionamos a los profesores y luego el profesor pondría a los alumnos el que él considere o el que ella considere. El pupils eh, es el material del alumno, como sabéis, y aquí, por eso os decía lo de que estamos preparados para cualquier escenario, eh, comprando el pupils tendrán consigo eh, la correspondiente licencia digital y comprando el Activity tendrá también, llevará su correspondiente licencia digital. Es decir, los niños dispondrán de su pupils en papel con su licencia digital, de su Activity en papel con su licencia digital y de su juego en 3D de Navio. Y por último, tienen un elemento muy novedoso este año, muy atractivo, que la verdad que está gustando mucho también, el llamado Extra Fan. ¿Y qué es el Extra Fan? Pues el Extra Fan es una especie, como veis, de magazine, de revista, con juegos, puzzles, eh, crucigramas, actividades lúdicas para practicar, eh, reforzar el lenguaje aprendido en el aula, pero de forma lúdica. Este material, en primero y segundo, aparece en el Pupils Book y a partir de tercero aparecerá en el Activity. 
La idea se puede trabajar pues, en clase pa, para los fast finishers, se puede trabajar pues, en casa, se puede, man, se puede mandar a, para casa como deberes, pero un poco jugando, que refuercen, repasen todo lo aprendido, se puede hacer en clase entre todos. El profesor, aparte de los profesores, aparte de disponer de esta plataforma digital donde contiene todo el método, donde tenéis todo el método, también tenemos los elementos físicos, que nos parecen muy importantes, sobre todo pues, para las edades más tempranas, para los más pequeñitos, los de primero y segundo, como se ha enseñado Dona, pues tenemos la Puppet, Rassac, y luego tenemos todos los elementos físicos, las flashcards, las work cards, las story cards, todas las tenéis también en formato físico, así como el teacher book, con todas las actividades, las worksheet de ampliación, todas las actividades de refuerzo, el teacher book, también dispondréis de él en papel. Esto sería un poco resumiendo los elementos del que va a disponer los profesores. Eh, uno, el de la arriba a la derecha, Advantage, el Macmillan Advantage, supongo que esta tarde habrá es, es usuarios de Macmillan en, en esta charla, entonces ellos ya conocerán qué es Advantage, pero si para los profesores que no trabajan con Macmillan, os voy a explicar brevemente qué es Advantage. Advantage es un portal de recursos, es un portal de recursos, un repositorio de recursos, es cerrado, lógicamente, que es el usuario de Macmillan, y es un portal donde tenemos infinidad de recursos. Tenemos por un lado todos los recursos del método propiamente dicho, en este caso todos lo, los recursos de KidsCamp, en este caso es como un, como un plan B, es otro camino para tener todos los elementos de KidsCamp. Tenemos toda la documentación en que necesitáis, pues le hace programaciones, todo lo concerniente a la legislación. Tenéis un Resource Hub y aquí tenéis cosas muy interesantes, actividades, por ejemplo, pues para fechas señaladas del año, que siempre, no sé, por ejemplo, Navidad, que siempre nos pedís pues, eh, a ver si tenemos alguna canción, algún villancico, alguna ficha. Pues en este Resource Hub tenéis material extra y actividades de todo tipo, de topics, de niveles. Y por último, tenéis también el Teacher Training Webinars, que son todas las charlas que dan que damos en Macmillan, todas las formaciones, todos los eh, eventos que por el tiempo no habéis podido asistir en directo, los tenemos grabados y podéis acceder a través de Macmillan Advantage a, a, a estos webinars. Y por mi parte, nada más. Si tenéis cualquier duda, cualquier pregunta, yo aquí estoy encantada de contestaros. Muy bien. Muchas gracias, Iciar. So, Thank you very much, everybody. I wish you all the very best with the rest of the course. There's not much time to go before the summer holidays. I do hope that is the best possible finish to the course this year, given the circuit, despite the circumstances. Um, and I do hope to see you again soon, hopefully next year, not, not, not too very far in the future. Please watch this place. We'll organize more events further down the line. We'd love to see you again. And um, thank you for spending this time with us. And I hope you have enjoyed uh, learning about Kids, Kids Can with us. Thank you very much. Good evening. Bye. <laughs>